Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Older Top Podcast, and this is your boy HD here with the Older Top Podcast crew. Uh, we always going to start with the playmaker. What's going on, play? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Good stuff, good stuff. We also got the young millennial Q. What's the deal, Q? No quip today. Too tired to think of one. <laughs> got you, got you, got you. Had a busy day. Long day for everybody. We also got the scholar run. What's up, baby? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Hey. Good, good. And we also got the lady of the Over the Top podcast, Miss Toya. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Incredible. Hey, guys, you can also check us out on Over the Top podcast Facebook page. Uh, thank you for joining us on WDJY 99.1 FM. Uh, continue to listen there. Also, catch us on our YouTube page. We just everywhere, guys. We're just trying to bring a better community. We're just trying to change, make our community better one conversation at a time. So we're going to start the show off. Always with an ask Toya. Toya, what you got going on? All right. I got a good one. It's a cute one. Dear Toya, I'm a newlywed and my husband and I did live together before we got married. But we did have overnight and weekend dates while dating. This is our first marriage for both of us. We are almost six months in. My question is, I'm ready to relax in this marriage, but my husband isn't. I don't think, and when I say relax, I mean things like uh, go to the bathroom when the door with the door open or walk in the bathroom while he's in the shower. Let him know that it takes a lot to put all of this together in the morning. I haven't even slept with a bonnet on yet or just my throw on pajamas, which is a t-shirt and shorts. I'm still wearing cute shit. How, how long does it take to relax in a marriage? Sign, I'm tired of being cute. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Who want to who who <laughs> take this first? That's... You know, let, 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 let's go with you, Ron. Let's go, let's go with you, Ron. Let, let, let's start with you on this. What you got? <laughs> you and I, <laughs> you and I, that's right. I, that's honestly, right. like, and keeping it all the way real, um, most of the people that I've ever been with, I've kept it all the way real. And I have not been really fake with them. I think it's a period of comfortability that you get to with a person. I'm thinking maybe two to three months in, maybe three or four months in, that you break that barrier down and you just truly got to be you. And especially if you feel the vibe, like you know who's a keeper and who's a who's a person that you may want to move on from. And so for me, what I tend to do, I cut it loose. I am who I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And if, sure. and if I go, I go and I just tell them, hey, look, you know, I try to be respectful of common places, but if we sitting in the living room watching TV, if we hanging out, hey, man, if I got to go, I got to go. And, you know, I, I cut it loose. So I'm just, that's just me, though. That's, okay. that's me. QQ, I know you're not married yet. I know that. So I know this heavy, this crazy, a little heavy for you, a little different for you. But what, 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 what do you think when you do, um, you get married? How long do you think it takes to get comfortable around a person? Even when you're dating. Even when you're dating, yeah. I don't think they get comfortable. Well, first to her question, I would add, I would answer that question with a question. Why do I get married if y'all wasn't hundred percent comfortable with each other yet? Mm-hmm. Facts. That's true. Facts. In fact, I feel like I don't even need to say that. Why would you get married if you <laughs> weren't comfortable, hundred percent comfortable with with that with the person you're marrying? Yeah. Once yeah. you answer that question, you will be, you will find an answer to how long it takes you to get comfortable with a person. With that person, but how long does it take you in in, in dating to be comfortable? Like I, I want to know, because you know, it it takes a minute for women. I think it's different. For men, I think it's easier, but for women, it's like certain things you hold off one for a while. But she said that they had overnight dates, and and they went away on trips and stuff like that. So they. They didn't live together. So living together is different. When you don't live together before marriage and then you come in with each other, you have to find each other's little quirks and and rituals that um, 
you learn. You learn uh, when you start living with somebody, when you're when you don't live together before marriage. There are rituals that you learn about that you did not know about because you didn't live together. <laughs> you did oh, I, mean, I will say to um, let me tell my ex husband had a whole lotioning station. I <laughs> a whole lotioning station, like, and it would take like a good 30 minutes. It would take him longer to get ready than it would take me to get ready because of this station that he had. He had a ritual that I learned about when we finally were living together. We didn't live together before marriage. We didn't even live together when we got married. We got married on a certain day. And then on that same day, he left and was sent to Iraq for nine months. So we were married, but we weren't together for nine Mm -hmm. months. And then when he comes home, I realized about this whole lotioning station. So there's <laughs> things that you have to, you when you when you don't live together, I think there is a time period of you getting comfortable in that living situation. Not comfortable with each other, but just in that living situation. Because that living situation is different. When you start living with somebody, it's different. Like y'all know when y'all first got married or when you first moved in with your significant other, y'all... <laughs> It we lived together before we got married. Yeah, we, we had huh? to. I believe we lived together before you got married. Hey, G, jump in there. What you think? What's your thoughts? Uh, okay. G. Uh, what you think? Well, uh, I, I I hear everybody's comments, and I understand them. But I understand there's a honeymoon phase where you kind of like everything is fine and dandy and all that. But it, we're talking about getting married. I think I need to see a little bit more transparency before I sign on the dotted line. I mean, <laughs> I, I know we're talking about, you know, passing gas and stuff like that, but it makes me wonder if there's some other layers that need to be peeled back. And what I, I don't like surprises. I don't want to wake up and now I'm surprised <laughs> of, of what, what I'm dealing oh, with. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm dealing with. So, you know, everybody's different. I understand there's a, a, a honeymoon phase. I understand that, you know, you got to ease into things. But I'm I'm kind of like, you know, day one, you know, fart in the car. So now I know what we're dealing with. No, we don't know. We you know, it ain't no, it ain't no six months. She was already ready to be comfortable but he has certain things that he... So men do have, and it may not be y'all. Y'all, men have certain things. Okay, so my sneaker the other says, you can't go in the bathroom while he's in the bathroom. That's his personal space. Where I'm used to just walking in the bathroom and doing what I got to do and walking out. I don't care if your shit stinks. It's your shit. We, we together. Your shit stink, my shit stink. That's just how it is. But um, that's his thing. He doesn't, and I respect that. But for me, I'm comfortable with you coming in the bathroom, having a conversation. And plus, too, I have kids. So I never have any free bathroom time, per se. When you have kids, you don't have. It don't matter what you're doing in there. They're still going to come in and, Mommy, what you doing? So uh, it doesn't matter to me. I She's saying she wants to get out of that cute stage of wearing cute pajamas. Girl, if you don't throw on a T-shirt and some shorts oh. or some bum, um, get in the bed with your bonnet on, uh because Toy asked me a question five minutes ago and y'all and y'all jumped again before I could answer that question. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. She did ask me how long it take me to get comfortable. I would say a few months. Honestly. Like after a few months, if there's certain things I still if I say things I feel comfortable with doing and you only come for doing, at that point I know, okay, we ain't this ain't this ain't this may not work out in the long run. But it's something she should have figured out when she first started. Being, oh, I'm comfortable doing this. Well, I'm not. Oh, that's a problem. That might be a problem down the line. <laughs> ah, but you, madam, are in it now. Well, I mean, <laughs> not in it. You can get out with it and probably take half the money. But that's another question. No, that's, you that's, in that's, it. that's another topic. You I in always, it. No, so, 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 me and my wife lived, and this was, this was 20, 20 so years ago. And me and my wife lived together for three years before we got married. I'm a firm believer when you're talking about marriage, you don't buy a car before you test drive. 
So you okay with living together? Mm-hmm. Kicking the wheels, shaking the arm, man, we're on lead. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know who we put the training in. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not sure on the warranty. Uh, but yeah, I believe before you get married, now, now dating, you know, a couple of months, everybody, everybody have certain clips or claims they do. They don't want other people to know. Some may be shaking, some may have a twist, whatever the case may be. So yeah, it do have a, it does have a timeline to um, adjust to that. But the flip side of that, I don't know. So, but for me, even if my wife don't have different standards, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna be myself. I'm aware. I'm aware what I'm aware when I meet you. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, well, I mean, you don't. But I was did you married it? But the problem is, I do believe you gotta live together. I do believe you. I know the old, they try to say the old biblical things are shacking. Nah, dude, you about, uh, if I'm gonna sign on the line for you forever, yeah, I gotta I got do a deep dive. We we, we gotta, we, 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 we gotta pull some layers back on this thing. <laughs> we gonna have to see, we gonna have to see what, what's going on. We gonna have to see I, what's going on. You know what, though? On. You know what's deep, though? I think even with the deep dive, you still don't know. You never know, but it changes. Because there's layers of people's personality you feel back 15 years later. There's yeah. representatives. Well, yeah, yeah, that stuff yeah. manifests. It manifests over a period of time. It's not something that you you see. And you can be a discerner. But some yeah. stuff over a period of time manifests. But do you want to marry a representative? But you don't know if it's... Let me tell you. You don't know if it's a representative. Like, it's be a whole person. And then you get into a situation where you're living together. And all of a sudden... Like who I are you? I woke up and said, "Who in the world are you? Why are you? Do I know you? Do I know you? I don't know you. Do I know then you? I think I think trauma and stress brings on certain things too. Like if you don't like if you don't like for us like being transparent, we had a child diagnosed with autism. Trauma changes your brain. So my wife was impacted, and Go so ahead. I was too. And Go so, ahead. but but there's because you have different roles, you have to manifest and deal with it differently. So it's, I think one of the things that we don't really understand is that when these things happen, life happens to you, how do you manage it? And it's different when it's your kids. Most of us have had uh, adverse situations that we power through. So best of luck to that young lady. I hopefully, hopefully she- <laughs> I, hope she, I hope she get Here's what I kids. say. Because Here's guess what, what I say. Best of luck guess to what? the guy. Stop because being guess what? Stop being because guess what? If but you got a problem with going to the bathroom, it's gonna be a lot more issues your marriage guy than 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 than, 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 than her shit stay. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's why we need. That's why we honestly, you know what? It should be mandated counseling before getting married. That should yes. be mandated. It shouldn't even be a, a question. But do counseling Man. work if you're not being truthful to the counselor? But that's a whole other subject matter. That's a whole other subject matter. We yeah. don't want to. We we jump down that road. <laughs> just say, look, hey, go ahead hey, and hey, 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 I'm just say, say this. Stay on the road. Go ahead yeah. and be yourself. Let go and see what happens. I mean, if you if you need to be comfortable in your own space, throw them bummy shorts on or them bummy uh, sweatpants on. Put and your bonnet on it. and get in the bed <laughs> and, and say good night, honey. It is a. It's the same with a bonnet and or without. It's the same thing, thing that's going to, it ain't changing because you got a bonnet. Great, great, great job, guys. What you say, Quinn? You, got, like, you, you want the last word? What you say? I didn't say nothing. Okay, I thought you said something. I'm sorry. Great, 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 great ass toy, you guys. I really enjoyed that one. That was a good, that was a goodie. So we're going to get you in the push, get in the push. Tonight, we're going to talk about the negative impacts, guys, on social media. So about two-thirds of America, about 64%, says that social media has a negative impact on the way things are going in this country today. This is according to the Pew Research Center survey of U.S. adults control, and that was done in 2020. So we're going to we're gonna jump right in, and we're going to go from a broad state and try to narrow it down. So I'm going to go with two playmakers. Um, what 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 do you think are the what do you believe or what impact do you what impact do you believe social media is having on our, on our society today? Um, since we're talking about the negative impacts, I'll just kind of focus on that. Uh, when I was kind of researching for this uh, this piece, I kind of looked at just some of the 
the things that just jump out at me is, and that's the uh, misinformation. So how some people look at the internet uh, social media to get their information or news and some of it is just flat out wrong or some of it is geared toward uh, a certain agenda and then you got um you know the harassment okay. 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 i'm sorry go ahead i'm sorry i mean good job oh and then you, then you have you know harassments uh you know people uh, spreading their uh messages of hate uh you know using uh social media and you got you know people who may be um uh, easily influenced, uh, grabbing a hold of this information, and uh, and 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 uh, having a negative impacts to their life and their environment. Um, and then there's uh, a couple of other things that I saw that were not as as big, but I saw that you have people suffering from depression and anxiety, uh, cyberbullying, uh, setting unrealistic expectations. Um, because they see things happening in social media, thinking their life should be another way. You have uh, people looking at these models and people uh, that have these uh, six packs and, and having, uh, you know, body shaming, uh, an addiction, um, uh, false sense of connection. So people think they got a thousand friends and really none of those people know them. Um, a, a heightened sense of importance. So people think because I got a thousand followers, I'm really doing something with my life. I'm really doing, I'm really the man. And uh, and, and then you also have the privacy issue. So there's a lot of negative impacts uh, that are uh, associated with, with uh, social media. And, and just for the record, I'm not bashing social media because there's also a lot of positive things that are happening with social media. But for this piece, we're just kind of focusing on some of the negative aspects. So that's kind of where where I'll uh, I'll pause. Okay, good, good, good. We're gonna touch on some of the subjects that you that you bring me you brought up. I'm going to Q. Do you think most of the problems of the youth is having to day is a direct link to social media? Um, there is a link, and I will say that because every issue in the world is in our hands. It's not like back in the day where last year, where like like Flamingo said, you gotta go on the news and you'll hear you'll hear something from one side. No, you can go on you can go on Twitter and hear and see one thing and hear from both sides. And to someone who's younger, it may, it may feel like, oh well, sounds like both of those sides hate that or both of those sides hate me or whatever. Um, the problem with uh, trans community, for for example, you, you can go on Twitter saying, oh yeah, there's, there's people who support me. And then one click later or one swipe later, you have the higher ups of the world, the, polit the politicians, not this, not the current president, the former president. They'll say, oh, well, they... X, Y, and Z about all of them and that will have a problem that will mess them up mentally so when kids when kids and teenagers say they have anxiety, they have all these mental issues, it's because unlike before unlike previous generation, they see everything that's being said it's not. It's not a. It's not a. Oh, only my family members saw say this, or only someone in school said. They see everything across right. the world in every language. Right. That can right. mess up mess with your mind mentally. Definitely, definitely. Well, spending too long on social media sites could definitely adversely affect your mood. In fact, chronic uh, chronic social users are more likely to report on um, poor mental health, including symptoms of anxiety and depression. RJ, I'm, I'm gonna come with you because you are a professional in, in your profession. Um, are you seeing an increase in the mental health issues as related to social media? Hey, I'm sorry, I had to unmute. I see a manifestation of aggression and I see it in relationship to social engagement on social media. Meaning like a lot of the a lot of the beef generally starts cracking on there. It's not interpersonal communication where a lot of the conflict comes from. It 
it is heightened on social media because there's eyes and audiences. And then what essentially happens, they get together in locations and they fight. And when them kids were saying maybe about four or five years ago, pull up, pull up, pull up on me. You remember the little dude said, pull up on me. Mm-hmm. And all true honesty, essentially what he would, we, I'm thinking it was like a laugh or a funny thing, but I, and going into the school setting, I'm working at a, a, a high school last year, I saw a lot of things that hurt me. And the impact of it is, like you said, the cyberbullying. A lot of our children are not socially, emotionally well. And they get sucked into these conflicts that take place on Instagram or social media, Snapchat or something like that. And then you have a whole mess. There's so many... How could I say it? There's so many situations or circumstances where kids are doing inappropriate things with social media because they lack the understanding of how to manage or use the tool. Mm. So what I say, they're being impacted, they're distinctly being impacted because there is a, a suffering and an inability to not press send. Right. right. There's no restraint. Right. Right. And that's the problem. Right. Connect the dots with that, Toya, with this. And and, and I'm going to come with you more, not necessarily, well, from a parent standpoint or a, a mother friend standpoint. What are some of the things that we can do better to monitor, um, not just our children's anxiety, but our anxiety when dealing with social media? I know we talk about Ron said it's over the fight and then we got the cyber bulletin, bullying. What are some of the things that we can um, do to monitor that anxiety when dealing with social media? Turn it off. <laughs> That's the one thing. Uh, <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> um, limit your limit your screen time. This is what we do with our children. I think with adults, it needs to be done too. What I've learned and with everyday life stresses, sometimes when I pick up my phone and I'm finding that I pick up my phone a lot less. I do certain things on social media, on TikTok and on Facebook for the show, um, for Ask Toya. But as far as everything else, I used to literally, it's called doom scrolling. And I just realized what it was called. Uh, I was today years old when I realized what it was called. Doom scrolling. So it's when you when you find one article about something that might be negative, your algorithm changes. Yeah. yeah. And so everything that you scroll is now negative. Everything that you see is now negative and that is you're taking that energy in and it's stressful when you're reading i don't even watch the news i had to turn off good morning america in the morning and that's just me trying to find out what's going on in the world what's happening political wise and things like that but there's certain stories in the morning that when the girls are getting dressed and they're coming in and out there was a story about the young kid that jumped off the building. I think it was 12 years old. And this was right when COVID had ended, when the kids were going back to school. And uh, Zoe came in and she was just like, oh my God, young people are throwing themselves off buildings. And Zora said, well, you know, mental health is real. We can pray about it, but Jesus wants you to see a therapist too. And that's where she started that statement at. The fact that they get nervous about things that they see. So it's just like, cut down your screen time. Know that those algorithms change from what you watch. So if you're sitting there watching bum fights all day long, <laughs> then your algorithm is going to change to bum fights. You're going to get... <laughs> or, or, or the Cray Challenge, huh? That part, you're going to get crazy stuff that you're going to see all the time. If you're watching people fight, then that's what your algorithm is going to change to. But if you're watching something positive, then your algorithm will change to positive things. And I don't think people understand that that algorithm is based on what you're constantly liking, those likes that you get. Set your screen time down. So now my phone literally goes on Do Not Disturb at 5 p.m. Okay. The only people I will get texts from is y'all, <laughs> uh, my mom, the girls, and Ty. 
that is it. I mm -hmm. shut down at 5 p.m. It comes back on at 5 a.m. So at 5 a.m., everybody who, and I just started doing this. I've been doing it for, it used to be 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., but I, I had to change the time because I realized that when I put my phone down, I get a lot more done. Right. But when I have it up, there's always somebody talking to me. I'm always scrolling. I can scroll TikTok for hours. And I started realizing that I look at the time and I don't watch the hundred and something videos because I done got stuck in scrolling. I remember TikTok used to have a disclaimer as you went strolling. Hey, guy, put the phone down. Take that hurt. <laughs> you don't realize how much yeah. you're watching until you, you look up and it's like yeah. 2 a.m. It's right, like, oh, no, crazy. I got to tap out. So, but when my phone goes back live at 5 a.m., it just starts blinging and blinging and blinging. And I realized how many people talk to me throughout the night that I necessarily don't really need to talk to or right. want to talk to, that part. Right. So, right. So, so turn it off with your kids. Now on their phone, My, I got nerdy kids. So social media is not a thing. If I say, come on, do a TikTok with me, they'll run away. They not, right. they not gonna, I have to catch them off guard. And dang, they not gonna dance because they ain't got no rhythm. They yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what part of Jersey y'all grew up in with no rhythm? <laughs> That's them. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't they, ca they don't catch don't the back beat. They is, they, they on the back. You know, you know where, what Gene that's from. They on the back. <laughs> Oh, but, but they Damn have crazy. on their phones they do have their phone shuts off at 7 p.m but they're not literally on their phone they don't they're not doing screen time if they're they're watching anime that's about it right. or something i'm or zor is watching something old like cold cold case files or not you know old, without a trace because she old old woman. Yeah, there's an old, old woman. woman. <laughs> All these they don't files, watch a lot of TV old so case files, but you're an old soul, ain't you? Yes. <laughs> you're the old soul. <laughs> yeah. But it's good that they don't watch a lot of TV. So yeah. they're not, and that sometimes is bad because they're not so much socially aware. They get their social settings from school. They learn about social. They don't listen to a whole, they don't listen to music that's inappropriate for their age. Right. Maybe Led right. Zeppelin is and right. Twisted Sister, it might be, but they're rocking. Wu Tang, maybe, but you know, Wu Tang, yes. and, Wu -Tang and Biggie, but <laughs> I can control that and I can right. control how much screen time they have. They don't play right. video games on the weekdays. They don't, um, they, and if they do play video games, they're playing Xbox or they on Roblox. It's not right. something that's crazy, crazy and out of the way. So it's just controlling what they, what your kids watch and controlling what you watch and turning yeah. it off at a certain time. There are studies that have been done that when you turn it off, you sleep better, you feel refreshed, you get more work done maybe, and then talk to real people in real time. Right. Quinn, I'm going with you. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. go ahead. Hey, we Quinn, I'm going with you with this because because we had talked about it before with cyberbullying and and social media is a breeding ground for 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 cyberbullying. I mean, we know the statistics. And if and if you guys want to check out our um um cyber that, 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 that cyberbullying podcast, go to YouTube. It's posted. But we we'll, we'll get there a little bit later. But Quinn, I'm gonna go with you with this one, man. What's the impact? On do social media hell with cyberbullying and what can be done to stop that? Unfortunately, there is really nothing you can do to stop it because people are going to be on the internet, and when you when you get on the internet and you're in a certain minority community, you are going you are going to face backlash. That's it. Whether you're whether you're in uh, the LGBTQ community, um, if you're in the the black community, gets a, gets a lot of it. But we we kind of fight back a lot harder. Um, a lot of minority communities get backlash on social media, and at younger age, when they're younger ages, a lot of them don't do do not know how to take that. They don't know how to turn it off. They and, it, and even if they do know how to turn it off, they 
don't know how to just stop thinking about it. They may not have nothing else to go go do to take their mind off of it. Right. There's internet, internet trolls are everywhere, and it's kind of no, not kind of. It's yeah, it's damn near impossible to stop or ignore it without limiting everything, and then you're getting into what some people like to call limiting free speech, which I think as that. My opinion on that is the topic for another day. Because some people right. do not do free speech. <clears throat> right. Quick, uh, get, play, I'm going with you with this one, G. It's a, and it's a little different take on it. Okay, uh, we always talk about the victims when it comes to cyberbullying online. What about the cyberbullier? What kind of mentor, what what type of person? And it, it may be a little off the topic of, 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 of uh, social media. But what type of person who's doing the cyber buddying? I mean, because normally we grow up, we kind of did face to face. What kind of person did is uh, is they using cyber buddies to hide themselves, or what type of person are uh, mentally we to do cyber buddy? They run. I'm, 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 I want to hear your take after Gary speak. Um, so before I answer that, I want to go back to just one of the things that Q said, uh, uh, where he talked about there's nothing can be be done. I, I, I agree with him 100% and, and, and part of that, but I don't want people to walk away feeling like there's that they're hopeless and that uh, if you're being bullied that there's no escape from that and there's nothing that you can do. Uh, I think that uh, if highlighted in our previous show about cyberbullying, there are, are avenues that you can go to try to get help. Uh, and, and one of the things that I kind of hate to say, but uh, we need to bring snitches back. Uh, so if you if your friend is being uh, harassed uh, on on social media and you know that they're suffering, uh, you know, hey, report it, report it. You know, they got ways you can report it anonymously. You can go to the police. Uh, some of these things are uh, closely aligned to hate groups and, and terrorist terrorist types attacks. So there's a lot of things you can do once that once it's out there. And um, like we were saying before, uh, a lot of people just sit around and watch people get attacked and, and do nothing. And sometimes those people who get attacked end up harming themselves. And that's a thing that nobody wants. Now, uh, to answer to go into your question about what kind of people, you know, I think um, at one time we thought these were uh, people who were in the in the, the lowest valleys, you know, some dark corner, you know, throwing out jazz because they thought they were uh, uh, marginalized. But as you look and dig deeper, you have people from uh, very high power positions who uh, do uh, take shots at people and people who are kind of like you know, um, for lack of a better word, nobody. So I don't, I don't think there is one class of people that kind of get caught up into this. I think it's just uh, some people are just not nice people and uh, it doesn't really matter if you, uh, what, what class of society you're in or what uh, nationality you're in or what groups you belong. I just think we just have some people who are just not uh, nice people and, and, and want to take shots at people. If I, can jump, if I can jump in real quick. And if anyone to anyone who did think that when I said yeah, there's nothing stopping it, I didn't mean that you can stop it. There is always someone who's willing to listen to your struggles. And I want anyone who's going through anything mental, understand that's what I mean. The internet, 50 to 70% of the internet is a fake place. It's people, it's people who are hiding behind something else. So there's people in real life that may not even be on social media, media who appreciate you and want you to continue living. Okay. Roger, what do you thought? What's your thoughts on that? On what Q just said? Yeah, well, what, 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 let's take another direction. Better get you a push it. So there's an acronym, it's F O M O. And it just sounds like what, and it, it is just what it sounds like. Form of anxiety you get when you feel like you're missing out on something or a positive experience on Facebook or, or on social media um, or Instagram feeding your ego or body shaming. Why do you, I mean, let's go this route. Why is being accepted or 
not being invited to the party on social media or they have a party not invited to and they feel a certain way why do being accepted by others especially on social media is is important to me? human beings are social creatures and social media has made it uh less taxing for people to engage with one another versus having fun functional conversation and developing communication skills navigate certain rooms so what you what you're technically seeing is people uh essentially using social media to, to regress to the mean in terms of being able to effectively engage people um i go into people's houses every day and i think sometimes when, when i tell my wife i don't want to go in a certain environment she bugs out on me right but um I have to become what I need to be to help people transition into the best place that they can be. However, the vast majority of society does not have to do anything to accommodate anybody other than the work they do at, job, at, 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 the, at the church house, job house. And they put that face on, they wear the mask, and then they come home. The issue more than anything else though is self-worth too. I don't think we have enough self-worth and I don't think we know ourselves. One of the things is, and, and I'm gonna be transparent here, one of the things that was really tough for me about the first relationship I was in, my significant other at that time, even though I treated her nicely, had some damage that I couldn't heal. And the lack of self-worth created a lot of that, those issues that impacted us. And so what, what I see, in terms of society and our need to be accepted. We need to spend more time doing work on ourselves so that we can manage the social situations and develop an awareness of our boundaries, our triggers, and what, what rooms we need to be in in order for us to be the best that we can possibly be. And to know when it's time to leave. And if you do those three or four things, everything else to work itself out. T, I'm going to come with you with this. You said it earlier. You, you'll be strolling on social media and you'll be strolling. Next thing you know, you see one or two videos. Next thing you know, your your whole timeline or your reels is flooded with the same garbage or with the same violence or whatever the case may be. Um, what is the responsibility of the social media company? Um, do, do you think they have responsibility um, to kind to kind of break that negativity back um and show show more positive image on their on, on their on their platform let's answer that one first what's your, what's your thoughts on that one do they have a responsibility yes you always have a social responsibility a moral responsibility but that's not making dollars yeah that's not that's the likes of where the negativity is that's where the dollars roll even if you are a, a influencer the more likes you get, the more money you make. That's how it works. And so you will do things that are um, not necessarily upon a normal moral compass to get those likes, to get that money, to get those subscribes. Um, I, it should be the responsibility. It should be if it was that easy to just wing out the good and the bad. But in life there's good and bad uh so they're not going to take responsibility for that now with the bullying and the things like that they're trying to cut down on things like that but it's literally when you open something up to the world and like you said it's just a touch everything is at the touch of your fingers this this thing was created by billionaires why would they want to change it up to something that might be totally positive and useful. In the beginning, it was created to be positive. It was be, it was created to connect people, right. to to um, so that you can reach different countries and different different types of people. But now it's it you have, and it's not all bad. Don't get me wrong. Like G said, it's not all bad. But we're right. talking about the negative aspect of it right now. Right. So that negative is. Literally, where the dollars are made. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go around because we know social media is addictive, and we kind of run a little low. But we're gonna do a little roundtable. So we know social media is more addictive than cigarettes and alcohol. 
Um, he has more power for draw the people to lead them to check. Um, check on it all the time. How many times a day do we do we look at my phone doing social media? Uh, see what's going on in the real. You wake up first when you wake up in the morning. The first thing most people do, I know I do, and I got to stop to myself. I look at my phone, and we, now we on the reels. We stroll, we stroll it. Um, I'm gonna go round table, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start with you. This is this little quick. We got about, about about four minutes, four or five minutes left. Um, uh, I'm start with you, Gary. What can we do to break the so the negative social media addiction? And I'm gonna get an answer from Gary Quinn and Ron and, and with you, T. Um, I think Toya kind of mentioned uh, this uh, in, in her one of her responses. But I think the thing is we have to realize that there's a world outside of social media. And there's uh, activities and things that we can be doing outside of just being stuck to our phone. And I think once we realize that, you know, hey, uh, let me put the phone down instead of looking at reels of, of basketball, let me pick up a basketball. Or, uh, you know, just uh, still seeing reels of, of traveling, let me hop on a flight. So I think the thing is just to um, find other things that can occupy your time other than being glued to the phone. You too. Um, I will, I will say what Playmaker is trying to say, but put a younger spin on it. Uh, what, he's, what he did tell a lot of y'all to do is uh, touch grass. Yeah, uh, the people. <laughs> yes. Touch. What kind of grass? Touch. Grass. Yeah, yeah. What kind of grass we talking about, sir? What kind of what grass we talking about? All, <laughs> but go outside and touch grass. If you want to, if you don't want to touch grass outside, you can stay inside and burn it. I don't care. <laughs> How <laughs> good? When I what I That's said it. earlier was true. Social me majority of social media is fake. The people that are talking about you on social media, 90% of the time will not say to you if they met you in person. And five of that 10% who would say it to you in person are someone who you could probably who you could probably just make them make them touch earth. <laughs> Yo take RJ. You're muted, you sir. Yourself, I'll mute all day. Yeah, I think I think it's priorities. And I think like I, I'm guilty of scrolling too much myself. So then I find what's important a lot. And to really take stock of what your day is like and what you want to accomplish and do that. And for younger people, just become more focused. I know for me, I need to as an adult, I get off the focus sometimes. More focus. Okay. Last word, T, you got a minute. I, I agree with everybody. I, agree, I like that touch grass. But I also think that when you touch grass, I think live is the worst thing they ever created. Because it's like, we have to see every part of your life live. Put your phone down. Like when we go to shows and people put their phones up to video a concert or something. How are you enjoying the concert when you're looking through it through your phone? I could have done that at home. Enjoy yourself out in the real world. I call it the 3D world. Be 3D for a minute. Stop looking at 2D stuff. It's it's a lot of good 3D things going on in life. And that's the wrap it up, guys. Hey, and again, again, um, go out and talk to people. Go out there and be more, be more handshake and a smile. Be more trans, be more interactive with people. Put it, put it down. Understand, understand what social media really is. It's a tool. And it's a tool to do to, to connect. It's a tool to is a tool to get information, but it's also very unrealistic. So be careful what you watch, monitor what you watch, guys. And I think we'll go better. But hey, great, great, great topic. Great, great topic on social media. We will continue the conversation. Um, great show, we'll continue the conversation. Um, we're about to wind it down a little bit. Who, who, the, Q, start, you, you start with the last words tonight. So what's your last word for tonight? Um, Can you, can you circle back to me? I'm going to certainly can. RJ, your last word for the night. That which make you can also break you. Hmm. Ah, that was short and sweet. Short <laughs> and sweet. Short and sweet. What about you, T? Check on your people. Um, our tomorrows aren't promised. 
So check on your people. Tell your people you love them. And that you just, you know, give somebody a call that you haven't talked to in a long time. You never know what anybody is going through. Make brighten someone's day. Facts, facts, facts. Playmaker, where you at? Hey, my thing is a little bit personal today. Um, so my thing is uh, always check your food before you eat. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Yeah, 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 give a little context. Give a little context. No, no, sir. Leave it as it is. Don't, don't leave it. Now, we keep it moving. Give it moving. Your last word. Your last word. Okay, so I got so if you if you walk down the street or you're on social media and you see somebody doing something that makes them happy and it's not affecting you in any way, shape, or form, and it makes you angry. Look inside and, and figure out why did that make you angry. Uh, and I also say, and I also want to say, nuggets and six. <laughs> that we say that for 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 another day, another story. Hey guys, my la- I see you, I see you, I see you. My last word, a hey, is the end of school year. Congratulations to all the graduates from college, high school, first grade, four K. Eighth grade, fifth grade. Did I miss a grade? Sixth grade, seventh grade. The college. Congratulations, all the grades. In the colleges, in the colleges, and the college dorm. Hey, teachers, well deserved break. Enjoy you guys' summer. Uh, parents, put a book in your child's hand this year. And that's the last word from the Over the Top Podcast family. And looking forward. As always, guys, may your next move be the game changer. Peace.